Welcome. My name is John Morris. I am editor of MyWirelessReview.com uh, for the Wireless Rehabilitation Engineering Research Center. And uh, today we are with John Rempel, Assistive Technology Instructor at the Center for the Visually Impaired here in Atlanta. And today John is going to talk about uh, a uh, comparison of web browsers and specifically the features and functioning of the browsers uh, for people with low vision and who are blind. Um, I think today we're, we're going to look at uh, first just sort of overall web page design and then some other assistive technology that goes with uh, web browsing and computing and then finally we will look at uh, uh, a comparison of web browsers themselves. So John, do you want to kick it off? Sure. So today I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the experience for a low vision person uh, as well as the person that's blind, but primarily low vision using the internet. Um, I, I teach assistive technology here at the center and one of the last things we teach is uh, internet access, uh, web browsing. For a person with no vision, it's by far the most challenging thing that we teach. It's very, very complex. And for a person that's low vision, depending on the level of magnification or modifications that are needed, it's one of the easiest things to teach. I wanted to start off a little bit by, by talking about the experiences of, for a person that's visually impaired. Um, a lot of people who go through visual impairments, uh, go through a visual impairment, try to do what they used to do in the same way whether it works or not. An example of that is using the mouse a lot. Um, we all go for the mouse and it's quick and it's easy. We all know that shortcut keys are much quicker. Um, it's just a matter of learning them and so there's definitely a learning curve here for people. Um, so I'm going to talk today about uh, primarily three different web browsers. Internet Explorer, which is most popular, Firefox, and Opera. And I'm also going to be talking about some of the configurations that can be made within the operating system to make it a little easier for a person with a visual impairment. There is sometimes an overlap between a person that needs a screen reader uh, to read the pages or screen enhancement or screen enlargement. And some of these programs will, will accommodate for both and some of them won't, will only work for one population. So. It's definitely not a cookie cutter solution. It's, it's very individualized. And I'm going to show some ways how this can be customized for, for each person's individual needs. And another factor to consider here is whether a person's using their computer at work, at home, or at a friend's, at a friend's place. Because sometimes, for example, if you go into a library, some of the changes I'm going to demonstrate here can't be made in a library. Um, system access isn't isn't allowed for, uh, for for the average person coming through the door wanting to use the computer. So that's another uh, thing I wanted to emphasize too. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, uh, let's start with C with Internet Explorer since that's the most uh, common web browser used today. And I've actually got uh, CVI's website here brought up. Now, this the contrast is fairly good here. It's black on white. That's that's the best contrast you can have: white on black or black on white. Uh, for people that are glare sensitive, uh, the black print on a white background can actually be very um, uh, difficult to read because of the glare sensitivity. The more white you have on a page for a person that's glare sensitive, the more challenging it's going to be. Unfortunately, Internet Explorer doesn't allow for quick um, uh, switch of, of, of the contrast level. In other words, white print on a black background. Um, <clears throat> but what all of these web browsers do have, which I'm showing today, is a very, very quick and easy way of enlarging, increasing or decreasing the size of the overall image. There are several ways this can be done. The easiest way is to press the control key, which is either on the bottom left or right of most keyboards, and then with my mouse, with the spin wheel between the left and right mouse button, I can very easily on the fly 
increase or decrease the size of this print. And this is a feature that has actually gotten better with virtually all of the web browsers. Primarily Internet Explorer and Firefox have gotten much better at this. It used to be this control spin wheel would only enlarge the text, but as of the last year and a half or so, it also increases the size of uh, images as well. So that's a very, very handy feature to have. There's one disadvantage to this. It's actually spilling off to the edge of the screen, so you're actually not seeing the full, uh, full web page. Now what I can do here is I can click on the spin wheel and just move the mouse to the right. Now as you can see, there's a little bit of blurring taking place and there's a considerable amount of hand-eye coordination and quick timing involved as to when to stop. It can get a little bit, bit dizzying. So it's, it's a solution. For some people it's not the best solution. John, is that only then in Internet Explorer or do, does Firefox and other, uh, do other browsers also have that same um, yeah, they, they all, the, the three that I'm going to show today have that as well. Yeah, and there are some advantages to, um, to Opera that I'm going to, um, uh, that I'm going to be showing you here that, that makes this much easier. Now the strange thing about Internet Explorer and why they did this, I, I don't know, because it's, it's not only for a person that has a visual impairment, the menu bar is gone. So you actually have to hit the Alt key in order for the menu bar to show up. Now if a person doesn't happen to have a spin wheel on their mouse, they can go to the view menu and they can increase the text size this way as well. Under view and text size, that's another alternative way of doing it. Because some people don't have a spin wheel on their mouse. Okay, so that's, that's Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer has actually improved considerably, especially in the last year or so. I have another question then. Um, on the spin wheel, it looked like you got variable enlargement, it basically almost in infinite adjustment. Right. But on, in the menu uh, right. commands, you really just have largest, very large, regular. Correct. And small, it's small. They, they try to standardize it or simplify it as much as possible. Um, yeah, that's, that's correct. You'll see when I show Firefox that it actually is a little bit different with Firefox, but you're right, you have some basic standard uh, sizes. It's almost like when you choose font size, you have standard like 12, 18, 36, 48. Mm -hmm. And with a spin wheel, you can go in and adjust it to whatever, whatever uh, size you want, but good point. So that's, that's definitely a limitation with, with the using the menu bar. Any other questions about Internet Explorer before I move on? No, I'm ready to Okay. I will mention one other thing. Um, shortcut keys are really valuable. And as you can see, I already have as a default a large black uh, pointer. Now what happens is, you see as soon as I, a lot of this is so intuitive, as soon as I move over to the text, that big pointer disappears. And for a lot of people with low vision using the internet, as soon as they move on to some text, they, they can often lose track of that mouse. So what I suggest is always pushing it either to the top left or top right and then slowly tracking back to wherever they want to be. And that's a good way of identifying where the actual pointer is. There are ways, if time allows, I can go in and show, show you how to configure the pointer size to customize it for, for a person's own preference. So uh, one other thing that's valuable that the majority of web browsers have is to access the address bar rather than trying to put the mouse pointer up here and locating it and clicking just right, the F6 key will do that automatically. Okay? Pressing F6 will immediately put the focus on the address bar and then you can type any, any website address you want 